There we go. Cool. All right. So there we go. And uh, just a quick intro again. My name is GQ, and I'm the CEO and co-founder here at LTV Plus. And I'll do my best to keep this as short as, and sweet as possible because I know we're kind of uh, a little bit over time here. So today I'm here to share with you the 2021 customer service trends in e-commerce. Now you're supporting many different brands out there. How does customer service fit in and what can brands consider implementing this year so that they can turn customer service ideally into a profit center? To give you a bit of background about LTV Plus and why we're here uh, sharing this today, we provide world-class customer service outsourcing services for e-commerce brands. And that places us in a really good spot to understand how customer service is evolving for brands across the board and also understanding what's working and what's not. With that in mind, the common belief at LTV Plus is contact centers are profit centers, and that's our main thing. We want to make sure that with every brand that we work with, we're increasing customer lifetime value by increasing sales and customer satisfaction every time. And to keep it simple, the underlying concept and mission, ridding the world of bad customer experiences because that makes a lot of sense and it's simple. Once you get this right, everything falls into place. So how do we help e-commerce brands? Now, these three core services are omnichannel customer service, card abandonment, and failed payment recovery services. Now, why these three services in particular? Because we see that these are the three services that bring the most ROI for brands when they're focusing on customer service. So to dive right into the trends that we were talking about, what we can see how e-commerce is doing right now is Consumers are spending more than $861 billion online with U.S. retailers alone, and that's in 2020. So that's up 44% in 2019. What that means for brands is e-commerce is super competitive. And I love the fact that, uh, just going back to what Kasha shared earlier, that if brands want to cut through the noise, if brands want to stay on top of their game, delivering highly personalized customer experiences is super crucial to acquiring and retaining customers. So we talked about customer retention. You're spending a lot of money on growing, you know, brands are spending a lot of money to grow their brands, to acquire customers. How do you retain them and how do you keep them around? That's really pretty simple. So what should brands consider implementing for a customer service in 2021? Well, we broke this down into four trends that we're seeing. The first one is omni-channel customer service. The second one is pro providing, being proactive with customer service. Number three, offering a self-service experience for people who don't want to talk to people. And the fourth part is providing a better agent experience so that brands can deliver great customer experiences. So we talk about omni-channel customer service. Now, we know that customers are using all kinds of different devices to interact with brands and they are you know, engaging with brands across chat, SMS, email, voice, you name it. And the thing is, not every brand is considering omni-channel customer service at this stage. Now, brands need to consider engaging with customers where they want to be engaged with. So, you know, let's say if I'm used to chat and chat is not available, that might be a little bit of a friction point. So that's something, so that's some possible advice you could share with the brands that you're supporting. And just a quick breakdown of how that looks like, we're seeing that a lot of consumers like live chat, that's 42%. There's email at 23%. Uh, 20, 16% at social, and then 19% for others, which falls under phone and SMS. So how can a brand consider implementing omni-channel customer service today? Well, first of all, you should work with an omni-channel help desk. And one of the speakers today is from Rich Panel, and Rich Panel is a uh, really good brand to work with in terms of help desks. And you can integrate your social media into that one single help desk. So be it Facebook, we're talking about Instagram, you know, SMS, phone, you name it. Having it all in one place will ensure that brands can actually scale their customer service very quickly. On top of that, also having a scalable team to meet customer service needs during peak periods. So what we're talking about here is brands, you know, you could advise brands to set up uh, a, a, a team of part-timers, contractors that can jump in when needed during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or when, you know, ad campaigns go crazy and, you know, we're experiencing a huge volume. Outside of that, they could also be working with, a, uh, with an outsourcing partner to make this work for them. Next, we talk about providing a more proactive approach to customer service. So the idea here is simple, think proactive. Brands should be able to help customers before they reach out. Now, how does that apply? Well, 
First of all, we, we use live chat as an example. With live chat, we've seen that customers that talk with agents or customer service are 10 to 20 times more likely to convert versus those that don't. Now, of course, the ideal situation is you create a great experience with, with the brand that you know they don't have to hit up customer service at all. But what about those customers that have doubts or have you know questions in their minds that they don't necessarily uh, ask or they might not instinctively hit up live chat straight away? So being uh, up and present, it's really important when you're doing proactive live chat and how does that work so first of all have live chat on stores secondly you can trigger chat pop-ups based on you know what pages they're on are we talking about maybe the collections pages we're talking about specific product and before people bounce I mean, let's say if the bounce rate is that you know people stay on for two minutes and maybe at, at the one minute and 45 second mark you can just send a pop-up and say hey i noticed that you were checking out our jeans collections did you now need help picking out a product you know and that at that point that gives you a super good point uh good uh, opportunity to converse and engage and also convert better because when you have highly trained pre-sales agents on chat, this gives the uh, op opportunities for brand to convert more customers and sell products, not for the sake of just sales, but also selling the right products and possibly cross-selling as well. Outside of that, we also talk about payment recovery. So we're talking about abandoned cards and failed payments for those who provide subscriptions. So with abandoned cards, we see that having a human approach to abandoned cards can go anywhere between 30 to 40% in recovery rates. And we're, if we're talking about subscriptions boxes, that's like 50 to 70% as a minimum. So these are low hanging fruits that brands can consider and you can work with them on that. So if you're in charge of say, setting up their campaigns in terms of email or you're setting up you know, SMS campaigns, et cetera, et cetera, ensure that your SMS campaigns and your emails uh, allow for two-way conversations in the sense that this links back to their customer service team, not just their marketing team, because you know, if a brand has 24 seven coverage, having a customer service team in place to respond to such recoveries will make it a lot more efficient and gives uh, the, the, the brand the opportunity to recover better, right? So two-way SMS applications, and of course, emails ideally linked to the help desk. On top of that, if the products are like luxury items or you know, like uh, in terms of cards, the average order value is more than five, like a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, it may also make sense to encourage brands to Call to, to hit up customers when they abandon carts and to help close that sale, address any inquiries or doubts that they might have and, and close that. Because we've seen certain brands that we support do this and it works well for them because it makes sense to invest in that time to reach out to people who would purchase a high value product. Next, we talk about a self-service experience. So we've been talking about the customer, you know, engaging a lot of communication that's great. What about if I'm a customer that does not want to talk to anyone? I really do not want to engage with customer service today. I just want to know more about your brand, what kind of products to sell and how it works and make that purchase. So we talk about creating a self-service experience. Now, 90% of consumers say they expect e-commerce brands to offer an online portal for self-service. 77% of them having used one. So. With that in mind, you know, we want to cater to customers like that as well, customers that don't want to engage with customer service. And so how can brands do that? Well, you can help brands, number one, set up a public knowledge base. So that could be where, not just FAQ. So FAQs is great, and we talk about that in number five. But what about setting up a knowledge base that, talk, that, that has videos, a video content around how you can use the product, you know, addressing where, where's the product made? Is it sustainable? You know, and all these informations can go into one knowledge base. And that links to number two, where you can provide automated uh, customer service as well for a brand where if people were to hit up chat for example and you know asking a simple question like where hey where's my order right and that's really really uh something that um that that, that really just kind of changes things up and so it alleviates and takes away a lot of the legwork that uh the the customer service agents have to pay attention to in the beginning. And so that frees up the human agents to focus on more complex inquiries. Number three, publishing how-to content, right? So if you're, pro if you're supporting a brand that, you know, it's more like tech products or, you know, it requires a little bit more work versus just, a, a, you know, depending on kind of the products they have, publishing how-to content, video, you know, uh, pictures and, and et cetera, that, that can be added to the knowledge base. That's super helpful. And number four, it's something that's really interesting is building out a public forum or a community. So the idea here is you want to make sure that, uh, you know, there is a community in place that can talk about your brand that, that acts in a way as their social proof of the brand that, that, that you're supporting, right? So 
people can go there. If I, if I didn't just want to hit up customer service and find out more about this brand this way, I can go to this forum or community and talk to people to find out what are, what do people really think about the brands? You know, what, what, so what, what do people recommend? You know, what, uh, if I have questions or doubts about, you know, uh, certain issues, can I talk with the community to find out more? And so that it becomes a self-sustaining ecosystem that you can use to uh, alleviate concerns for brands. And finally, the very simple one, having an up-to-date FAQ section, because some brands can tend to forget that and they might not update their FAQ section for like a few months or even a year. So having that integration with customer service to provide that information would be very, very helpful. Finally, we come to the agent experience where we're talking about not just the consumer or the customer, we're talking about the agents that are supporting uh, the customer service team, right? So the agent experience is super crucial simply because brands need to be able to equip their agents to provide great customer experiences. And so how can, how can you implement that? Well, the first part is ensuring that the technologies that they're using you know, are the latest and ensuring that you know, you're able to support omni-channel customer service, you're able to automate certain aspects of that. Number two, providing continuous training. So agents are well-equipped with product knowledge and also the uh, documentation and processes in the brand Number three, having more accessible customer data as well. So that means that an agent is able to contextualize how the conversations have been like with a certain customer and therefore being able to, which leads to point number four, providing highly personalized conversations. Because if I were to hit up a brand on Monday through SMS, on, on Tuesday through a phone, a phone call, and then on Thursday, I'm engaging through chat now, right? If I were to come in as that agent on, on Thursday, I want to be able to see what has happened in the past week and I understand where the order is. Like, so if there's like some changes that needs to happen with the order, I don't have to ask the same questions again. And that creates a much better experience versus repeatedly asking the same question every single time. And then point number five is ensuring that, you know, working with brands to ensure that their documentation and guidelines are in place. Now, why do we say flexible guidelines? This leads to the next point. Empowering agents to focus on outcomes instead of just KPIs, simply because if a brand is very highly focused on delivering great experiences and, and first touch resolutions, we want to make sure that the agents are well equipped to do that and they have the freedom to do that. Some brands might say, okay, hey, keep your average handling time down to like, like two minutes and then keep moving on to other tickets so that we can clear the queue a lot better. However, if uh, the, you know, if the initiative is to say, hey, leave, a, let, ensure that the customer leaves with a smile and becomes an evangelist, you know, agents will be, well, will take the right steps to maybe extend a conversation if it takes five minutes, but it resolves the resolution of the, during that five minutes and customers are happy, that's definitely a way better experience than have, having to have the, the customer come back repeatedly to ask more questions. So empower the agents to prioritize customer outcomes, not just KPIs. And with that, to round up this presentation, I think I've sped through that like a bullet train, delivering a highly personalized experience across all channels is super critical to a brand's growth in 2021 and beyond. And now, if you have any questions, I'm ready to take them.